Hey everyone, welcome back. This video, we're gonna talk about while loops. I would highly recommend you check out the previous video where we go hands-on with a for loop, talking about counting up, counting down, and how to do something a little bit more complex like a factorial. This video is going to basically be a copy of that video, but now instead of using a for loop, we're going to use a while loop, and you can see how similar they are. Now, first, I would ask you to check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ codebase and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. And now let's get into while loops. So I'm gonna keep some of this code for reference, but I'm just gonna comment it out and kind of just scoot it down to the bottom as if it doesn't exist. <laughs> also, I wanna show you guys something cool that this return zero is actually optional. So if I got rid of this, the application should still compile. Basically, it's going to return zero implicitly. It's basically one of the only exceptions where you don't have to use a return, even though it says there is a return type of integer. But that is totally off topic and really not what I wanted to talk about in this video, but <laughs> just thought I'd throw that out there. All right, so let's talk a little bit about while loops. Okay, so first, the initialization happens first. So we say int i equals zero, then we do the while, and inside of here we have the condition. So we can say i is less than 10. Now the update happens at the end of the while loop. And you'll see why I put it at the end in just a minute. This is an important thing to remember, is generally you're going to want to put the increment at the end. And then in here, we're going to output i, like so. Now let's do a compilation and run. And you can see it counts from zero to nine. The same code inside of a for loop would look like so. We would have int i equals zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus. So all the pieces are the same, they're just in different locations. Now if you put this i at the top of the while loop, that's going to change the structure so it would no longer match the for loop. And that is the reason you wanna put the i plus plus at the bottom. It's because in order for there to be some kind of coherency between for loops and while loops, you need to match the way they operate. So when you're doing a for loop, the initialization happens first, then the comparison, and then the body is evaluated, so our code is ran, and then the increment happens at the end of this body being ran. So it actually follows this structure, even though it looks like that I++ happens at the beginning. It actually doesn't, it happens at the end, after our code is executed. That's why if we output I here, it outputs as zero, not as one. To match that with a while loop, we need to output i first and then increment i. So that is the magic as to why you put the i++ at the end. Now, if we wanted to count down, it's very simple. We start at 10, for example, and we could say as long as i is greater than or equal to zero, and then we can output i and make sure we decrement. I'm gonna comment out this for loop too. Actually, I'm just gonna get rid of it. We don't need it. So I save that. Now let's compile and run. And you can see it counts down from nine. Oh, actually it counts down from 10. So this is actually doing 11 iterations. If we want to do 10 iterations, we can start at nine and then go down to zero. Sorry guys. So now when we compile and run, it goes from nine right there all the way down to zero. So 10 iterations from nine to zero. If we wanted to start at 10 and go to one, very simple, just change the numbers, 10 to one. Now when we run, it goes from 10 down to one. It's kind of hard to scroll. It would probably have been better if I did a tab or something here. So you could just do like a tab there and then at the end you could do an end line. So like so. Now it might be a little bit easier to see. It goes 10 all the way down to one. Wish I did that from the beginning, but uh, oh well. Now what I want to do is I want to do the same thing that we did in the previous video, which is calculating a factorial. So let's do that. Let's not look at this code. Let's just start from scratch. And then we can compare to make sure everything looks the same. So what we're going to do is calculate the factorial, and in order to do that, we can start with some number. We'll call it factorial, and we'll just set that equal to five. So we wanna calculate the factorial of five, and we're still going to need that i variable. So we'll just set that equal to zero. 
So if we want to do the, cal the factorial of 5, it's going to look like this. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. We don't want to go any farther because if we multiply by 0, that's going to reset the whole thing. We also don't need to multiply by 1 because it doesn't actually do anything. So we actually only need to do this sequence right here. So we can actually set i to factorial. That'll give it the value 5 in this situation. And then what we want to do is we want to count down to 2. So as long as this is greater than 1, it should work. You could also use greater than or equal to 2. Whatever you prefer, it should do the same thing. I'm going to use greater than 1. All right, so we start at 5. We count down to 2. And then we need to, to basically keep track of the value in this factorial variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to say factorial. Use the multiplication equals. And what this will do is basically it'll do factorial equals factorial multiplied by something. But it's just a shorter way of doing that. So factorial multiplies equals. And then just putting whatever we want to multiply it by. So in this case, we're going to multiply it by i. And then we need to decrement i. And then when we're done with the loop, we need to output that value. So what we're going to do is we're just going to output factorial and then a new line. Now when we compile and run, we get the value 600, which is not right. And the reason it's not right is because we actually need to start with factorial minus 1, which basically what was happening that was incorrect is we started with 5, and then we did 5 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is not what we want. So we basically start with a value 5, and then we multiply this sequence with it. So sorry about that, guys. That's actually exactly what we did correctly in the previous example, where we set i equal to factorial minus 1. So hopefully you guys are watching the previous video and you caught that, but I decided I wasn't going to redo it because, you know, mistakes happen. So that is a, a valid mistake. So we start at 5, then we multiply it by 4, and then that new value, which is going to be 20, is going to be multiplied by 3, which will give us 60, and then 60 is going to be multiplied by 2, which will be 120. So now let's compile and run and see if we get the right answer. And indeed, we do get 120. But now this is generalized, so we can make this whatever value we want. We could do a 10, for example. Factorials will get pretty huge pretty quickly, so we can't go much higher. <laughs> and what the heck, let's just put some huge value. And you can see we get zero, so that's 